We start a new devotional series today on the book of the Revelation. Now, we're not going to go into the strange prophecies about the end of the world. We're going to look primarily at the vision of Jesus Christ at the beginning of the book and what he has to say to the seven churches in Asia Minor. Uh, what does he say um, to their situations? What word of encouragement? What word of correction? What word of hope in the midst of their struggles? And that's what I want to talk about today, tr- struggles. Have you struggled? Have you ever felt so tired that you didn't know if you had one more day left in you, one more day of dealing with the boss tearing you down, one more day of caring for a child that has a long-term illness, one more day of a bumpy marriage, one more day of just the struggle and grind of life. Well, it's into that seeming long defeat that Jesus, the Christ, appears, and he speaks to our weariness, he speaks to our sense of defeat, And he shows us victory. Let me read from the Revelation chapter 1, starting in verse 9. The revelation of Jesus Christ. I, John, your brother and partner in the tribulation and the kingdom and the patient endurance that are in Jesus, was on the island called Patmos on account of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. He was exiled there because of his witness for Jesus. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet saying, write what you see in a book and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus and to Smyrna and to Pergamum and to Thyatira and to Sardis and to Philadelphia and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me and on turning I saw seven golden lampstands. These lampstands stand for the churches and really stand for all of the church. And in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash around his chest. The hairs of his head were white, like white wool, like snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze refined in a furnace. And his voice was like the roar of many waters. In his right hand he held seven stars. From his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun shining in full strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead, but he laid his right hand on me, saying, Fear not. As a kid, I thought of the book of the Revelation is a scary depiction of the end of the world. I thought of it as a book of horrors, but that's not what the Revelation is at all. It's a revealing of Christ, but not the horrors of the end of the world, but the hope that Jesus gives. Now, at risk of asking the obvious, why is it that we need hope? Well, as wondrous as life can be, is also very hard, very challenging. Um, The world is populated by people who are brutally selfish, looking out first for themselves at the expense of all other things. And to be honest, we all kind of participate in that. And it makes for a lot of misery. So we need hope. Even an ordinary life needs extraordinary hope. And that's what we see in this vision of Christ, burning eyes, glowing feet, a voice like the roar of many waters. Uh, This vision of Christ at first might seem terrifying, and in fact, John himself falls at the feet of Jesus as though dead, he says. But what does Jesus say next? Fear not. I come in power, but I don't come to harm Uh, my people, I come to save them. I come to be with them, to be in their midst, the midst of their struggles uh, and their suffering. He comes to stand among the lampstands, again, representative of those churches that he mentions. And his powerful and good presence should give us hope, hope in our struggles. Um, And hope can make all the difference in our experience and in the outcomes um, we have in our lives. In the 1950s, a professor at John Hopkins, uh, Kurt Richter, conducted a fascinating, if kind of cruel, experiment on rats. Richter placed 
wild rats in a container of water one by one um, to see how long they would persevere in swimming. And he anticipated that wild rats and their tenacity and ferocity would, would last a good long while. But to his surprise, uh, they only lasted about 15 minutes before giving up and sinking to the bottom of the container. Now he wondered what might happen if hope was introduced to, to this experiment. So when the rats gave up, he would grab them and take them out of the water. Um, he would dry them off, let them rest, let them recover, and then put them back in the water and see how long they lasted. Um, what do you think happened? Well, they swam longer, that's for sure. Um, how long, how much longer do you think they lasted? The rats would swim for 60 hours. That is a big difference. 60 hours. The idea of hope that there is uh, the possibility of rescue changes everything. And what I want to encourage you to think of is this powerful vision of Jesus. He is capable. He can do the impossible. And he is in our midst. Why? Because he loves us. And when we believe that, it changes everything. Will you let that truth fuel your engagement with life this week? Blessings on you all.